Stop worrying about what other people think of you. Worry about who you actually are. When your Lord raises you on the day of judgment, he will not be swayed by public opinion. Paying too much attention to the opinions of others can be dangerous to our being. Although pain cannot be locked up, it is necessary to manifest it privately because some people take pleasure in seeing others suffer or even contribute to making the situation worse. Imagine yourself as a plant whose roots run deep. People may step on it, injure it, and tear it up. But its roots remain firm in the ground just as your faith must remain. The Prophet ﷺ said, Your tribe has mistreated me much, and the worst was on the day of Aqba. I left, overcome with grief, and could not relax until I found myself on a tree where I looked up and saw Gabriel. He called to me and said, Allah has heard the words of your people and how they have responded to you, and Allah has sent the angel of the mountains for you to command him to do to these people whatever you want. The angel of the mountains greeted me and said, O oh Muhammad, order what you want, and if you want, I will bring down the two mountains on them. I said, No, I rather hope that Allah will bring from their descendants people who will worship Allah without associating partners with him. Muhammad, instead of responding to the abuse with resentment, preferred to let it go. In this video, I will tell you seven Islamic principles to stop caring about other people's opinions. I invite you to watch the video until the end. Number one, develop confidence. The Prophet Sallallahu said, none of you should say, my soul is soiled, but you should say, my soul is deficient. Sahih al-Bukhari. It is not appreciable for a Muslim to describe himself with ugly qualities, although if he is sincere, it is not about humility. Many people think that having confidence is equal to arrogance, so they limit themselves to unnecessary humility. It doesn't necessarily mean you should restrict yourself from big things. Confidence is a fundamental pillar for dealing with the opinions of others. In Islam, trust comes from an awareness of one's relationship with the law. Focus on your identity as a creature of a law and strengthen your self-confidence through prayer and personal reflection. Allah created each of us with a unique purpose and self-confidence comes from awareness of this purpose. This connection with the Creator will protect you from human opinions, allowing you to walk confidently on your spiritual path. Allah knows the burden of pain and sufferance. Even the Prophet Muhammad experienced injustice and cruelty from his tribe. However, instead of responding with resentment, he chose the path of forgiveness. Number two, stop overthinking. Most people do not realize that they live more in their thoughts than in reality. In the process, they create an imaginary reality, often influenced by fears. Islam encourages reflecting wisely, but overthinking can lead to an uncontrolled flow of thoughts that could be harmful to inner peace. The truth is that these thoughts not only fuel our insecurities, but can also influence our external reality, making our worries evident in the eyes of others. When we allow negative thoughts to take over, we begin to unconsciously convey our insecurities through body language. So from a simple manifested thought, we turn it into reality through a series of events. Thoughts that guide us toward a better life are the only thoughts we should allow to enter our minds. The mind is a precious gift from Allah and we should protect it, using our thoughts constructively to serve our Creator and improve ourselves. The Quran explicitly says to turn to positive and constructive thoughts. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, and take provisions, but indeed the best thing is the fear of Allah. And fear me, O you endowed with intellect. This verse emphasizes the importance of feeding our minds with awareness of Allah. When our attention focuses on thoughts that reflect wisdom, we can avoid overthinking meaningless concerns. Even when you perform your tasks to the best of your ability, it should be wisely understood that the outcome of events isn't meant to be in your hands. Allah knows what is best for you contrary to how you might feel when your life is falling apart. Trust in Allah's plans. Number three, take care of yourself. This practice is not only a way to increase well-being and self-confidence, it is also a way to show gratitude to Allah for the opportunity to live in maximum health. First, take care of your body. Consider starting a healthy protein diet. In the morning, the Prophet ate seven dates and a glass of raw milk. Benefits derived from this breakfast are many. Besides being immune to any poison, as mentioned in the Sunnah, it contains all the nutrients needed for a hectic day. Dates have also been shown to contain antioxidants, which contribute to the immune system. 
For the rest of the day, eat enough protein and drink plenty of water, all in moderation. If you have the opportunity, work out at the gym. Otherwise, you can always do it at home. The Prophet kept himself fit by running, riding, and archery. Also, don't forget the importance of exposing yourself to the sun. If you live in a sunless environment, stay out as much as possible anyway, as the sun's rays still reach the earth. Also, taking care of your skin is not only characteristic of women. It is important to implement a skincare routine to keep your face well moisturized. These are the ones I currently use. If you want to buy them and also support me, you can buy them from the links I put in the comments. Second, take care of your mind. Muhammad, before the prophecy, withdrew daily to the Hara cave, meditating on life for long periods. At the age of 40, he received his first revelation there. Although today the practice of meditation is sometimes associated with Eastern traditions, it is important to recognize that Islam also embraces contemplative practices. The act of reflection and meditation is known as tafakkur. To begin practicing it the right way, you should find a quiet place free from distractions. Close your eyes and begin to feel your deep breath. Your breath is the most important thing because it comes directly from Allah's will. Once you get maximum consciousness, visualize your thoughts, but do not respond with the little voice in your head. Observe and do not comment. After you get control of your mind, contemplate on the greatness of Allah's creation. And if you get distracted, start again. Do not put too much pressure on yourself in this practice. Initially, you will find difficulty, but that's normal. Consistency is the key, and you will see the results. Number four, understand your position in the universe. Do you know when on certain days you feel a void within yourself? This happens when an individual knows neither himself nor his position in the universe. What do I mean by position? According to Islam, man was created in his best form with both inner and outer beauty and potential. Despite his insignificant position in the universe, his value is equal to it because Allah willed it. Human beings have the ability to speak a language with the use of words. God endowed mankind with disability and this indicates that God's teachings are related to knowledge. Humanity loves to use symbols and ascribe meaning to them. Through this activity, it discovers the meanings of the universe. With these characteristics, language is a divine gift, exclusive to humanity. Humanity has great potential to be perfect and contribute to justice and harmony in society. Islam aims to help man realize his potential and become a perfect man. The prophets in history put themselves forward as role models in this regard, merely propagating the message of Allah. Islam denounces worldly pleasures to some extent without ignoring life, health, and inclination to worldly pleasures. Allah sent us the prophet to produce the best exemplary human conduct. He never aimed to transform the nature of human beings into angels. Rather, he recognized human nature and established Islam in a way that satisfied the dunya and akhirah. Life is a test from which a person must emerge successful. Our task is to serve Allah with utmost effort. This is our mission and our main purpose in life. When we strive to serve Allah with dedication and commitment, we are fulfilling our role as worshippers of the Creator. Allah created us with a purpose and our existence finds meaning in trying to fulfill that purpose through obedience. Allah has endowed us with free will. Our task is to use this blessing to draw closer to Him by performing actions that benefit ourselves and others. Many people misunderstand the fact that we do not have free will since Allah has already accounted for the final destination. This does not mean that whatever we do is useless to change our destiny. Yes, our end is already written, but we can never know it, which is why we have free will. Now that you have delved into this information, do you still think you can be hurt by the opinions of others? Number five. Remove negativity from your life. As mentioned earlier, there are choices that we make with free will. However, some things happen beyond our control. It is up to us to decide whether to react positively or negatively to these unforeseen circumstances, thus turning our approach into a manifestation of our true inner power. The real challenge lies in maintaining serenity in the face of Allah's plans without losing trust in Him. To maintain a positive outlook, it's essential to eliminate any kind of negative influences from the people around us, as these influences can have a direct impact on our mindset. Positivity also comes from carefully selecting the people with whom we share our time and energy. 
Removing the negative mindset requires a constant commitment to the practice of self-reflection. Prayer and spiritual connection with Allah can provide the inner strength needed to face challenges with optimism. Every morning, before you wake up, get up and say, Alhamdulillah, I am still alive. This simple act of will connect you with the gift of life and help you start the day with a grateful heart. The practice of gratitude is a way to recognize the blessings we often take for granted, thereby strengthening our positive outlook. Avoiding indulging in unnecessary arguments is an extension of this practice. Arguing with people just to prove your point is right is just a waste of time and energy. Whenever we have these kinds of arguments, our mission is simply to prove that we are right and the other person is wrong. In this process, our mind constantly produces negative thoughts about our opponent and this creates hatred between us. However, in a discussion of high importance, such as when it is necessary to defend one's religion, the perspective changes. In such cases, our mission is not just to prove the superiority of our point of view, but rather to defend truth and justice. In the context of a discussion of high relevance, it is essential to maintain a respectful tone and focus on the constructive presentation of one's ideas without feeding negative feelings. This approach not only allows one to defend one's faith effectively, but also helps to preserve positivity. Number six, embrace patience and tolerance. Patience is a power in Islam, an incredible quality that helps us face any moment in life, making us unwavering. In Surah Al-Baqarah, you who have believed seek help through patience and prayer. Verily, Allah is with the patient. This statement teaches us that patience is not only a virtue, but as a means by which we can seek divine support. In the challenges of life, patience becomes a kind of connection with the law. Being patient does not only mean passively enduring adversity, but also involves active engagement in the pursuit of good. In this way, patience becomes a manifestation of our love and submission to a law, making us stronger in the face of trials and more aware of his nearness. Unfortunately, in the younger generation, society often promotes the expectation of quick and immediate results. This desire for instant gratification has contributed to the fading of the importance of patience at crucial moments in life. However, it is precisely in these moments that patience proves essential. It is easy to desire quick and immediate solutions, but patience teaches us that the path to solving a problem can take time. However, when we talk about tolerance, it is a tool that should be used with caution. Tolerance should not be confused with passive acceptance of everything. Rather, it requires a deep understanding of diversity. While patience teaches us to endure difficulties, tolerance invites us to be open and respectful toward the differences that characterize society. Tolerance implies the ability to coexist peacefully despite cultural, religious, or social differences. It is important to stress that tolerance should never be used as a justification for suppressing injustice. In Islam, tolerance does not imply a belief that all religions are equal, nor does it deny the supremacy of Islam over other faiths. It does not prevent the transmission of Islam's message to others or the hope that they may embrace the Muslim faith. On the contrary, Islamic tolerance is based on understanding differences and mutual respect, but without compromising one's identity and beliefs. Do not misunderstand. It does not mean that we should not do dawah. On the contrary, it is our job to do with, with the utmost patience and tolerance. With these qualities, we will be able to easily ignore what people think of us. Number seven, forgive and forget. Forgiveness is a conscious act, a deliberate decision to release resentment towards someone who has hurt you. Contrary to what many think, forgiveness does not mean forgetting the action that caused the pain, nor does it mean passively accepting to minimize the pain. Forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. It is the release of an emotional burden that allows heart to be freed from negative feelings. Forgiveness is an act of self-awareness. It can be a difficult and lengthy process but the result is greater inner peace and the ability to build healthier relationships in the future. The prophet once said, forgive and Allah will forgive you. After years of persecution, the prophet and his followers conquered Mecca without meeting much resistance. At that pivotal moment, the prophet could have taken revenge on those who had harmed him. 
but instead he chose the path of forgiveness. The Prophet announced a general forgiveness for all the inhabitants of Mecca, addressing his former persecutors. He said, Go, you are free. Many of them converted immediately. However, when it comes to forgetting, it is impossible to completely forget something. What is possible to do is to let it go. This action demonstrates considerable strength, as it is understood that no one can mentally hurt you without your consent. It represents a powerful recognition of the control we have over our emotional reactions and the ability to protect our mental health. When we choose not to allow others to negatively influence our state of mind, we manifest an emotional autonomy that guides us toward a more balanced and centered life. This does not mean completely ignoring the actions of others, but rather adopting a perspective that allows us to respond intelligently instead of reacting impulsively. True strength lies not only in the ability to deal with external challenges, but also in the ability to manage inner responses. When we decide to protect our minds, we avoid being influenced by external factors. Comment SubhanAllah if you have reached this point in the video. And congratulations, from now on you will no longer be bothered by the opinions of others. What you can do now is watch one of these videos to increase your knowledge. Thank you and may Allah bless you.